In this video, let us understand how a Python program executes. Let us say we have a file with the name first program dot py. Let us say we have a first program dot py. In order to compile this program, we say python first program dot py. Once this program gets compiled, we get a file with the name called as first program dot pyc. Which is nothing but python bytecodes. Now, the people who are already having some background on Java, once a Java program gets compiled, we get a Java bytecodes. And the people who are familiar with csharp.net, they may be aware that once a csharp program gets compiled, we will get MSIL instructions. In the same way, whenever a Python program gets compiled, we get Python bytecodes. Like how a Java bytecode is an intermediate language, and how a MSIL of .NET is an intermediate instructions. Similarly, Python bytecodes is also an intermediate instructions, which means that no operating system can understand Python bytecodes. Like how Java program in order to get executed, they have JVM. And for .NET, how they have something called a CLR for executing a C -sharp program. In order to execute a Python code, we will take the support of Python virtual machine. Once the Python bytecodes are passed to the Python virtual machine, then we get the output. then we get the output and remember this this python bytecodes file the pyc file will not get generated every time the program gets executed now one important point we need to understand that is whenever you observe a java language we will try to compile the program using java c and the file name and in order to execute we take the support of Java and the class name. And when it comes to the Python, compiling the instructions and execution, both will be taken care by the Python itself. Now let us try to understand when and how the Python bytecodes file gets generated. Let us say we have first program.py. Whenever we try to execute this program, it will first verify if first program dot pyc file is existing or not. If the file is not existing, then it will generate first program.pyc file and then we will get the result which is nothing but our output. If first program.pyc file is already existing then it will verify if first program.pyc timestamp is lesser than first program dot python file in case in case if first program dot pyc time is lesser than the modified time of first program dot py then once again it will generate the pyc file else else it will use the existing first program dot pyc file and generates the output now 
let us understand these features practically let me open visual studio code and in order to generate the pyc file explicitly we have many different ways let me use a simple method by loading the module style so let me type in python hyphen m first program dot py we can observe some error message which states no modules found etc later in this course i will discuss in detail what are python modules but as we don't have python modules in the first program dot py we got this error but if you observe you can notice that a new folder has been created with the name underscore underscore pycache underscore underscore let me open the folder we can observe the compiled python code for the first program dot py file now in order to execute the file let me change the directory to pycatch folder so let me type in cd underscore underscore pycatch underscore underscore now in order to execute the python compiled code we need to type in python and the python compiled file name so let me type in the file name we can observe the result usually we don't have to explicitly perform all this task whenever we type in python and the python file name dot py automatically python takes care about all these steps